How you doing, saints? My name is Emmanuel. And the testimony I'm going to be sharing with you today is a true story of what happened when I stood outside the gates of hell. I know many of you, you've probably seen many hell testimonies and, you know, they were graphic and there were, you know, certain things that the Lord revealed to his servants about that place called hell. But what I'm going to be telling you is a true testimony of what happened to me when I ended up outside of the gates of hell. It started one night. This happened about a year ago. I could put, if I could put it, it happened around March 2019, this experience that I had. What happened was I went to sleep one night. I went to sleep one night and many nights I go to sleep. Um, I don't, I don't really dream. I have no dream. I go to sleep. I pray before I go to sleep and then I, I just go to sleep and then I wake up and then everything is fine. But in, on this particular night, I went to sleep. I went to sleep. And what happened when I woke, I went to sleep was that I, I found myself outside of one of a gate. At first, when I first saw that gate, I was wondering, what was this gate? And then suddenly, I had a, a revelation. I had a revelation that I was standing outside of one of the gates of hell. I knew at that point that I was outside of hell. What was I doing there? I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. What am I doing here? So as I have this knowledge that's because over there in the spiritual realm, you just know things. I knew that I was standing outside of the gates of hell. So I began to frantically look around, look around like, where, where am I? If this is hell, what am I doing outside of hell? So at this point is when I cried out, Jesus, Jesus, where are you? And Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared to me. And he was, he was to the right of me. Here's the gate straight ahead. And Jesus is to my right about six feet away from me. And Jesus, Jesus has his head down. He has his head down and he has a hood on. And Jesus, he doesn't even want to look at me. He doesn't even want to look at me. And I could tell by Jesus's countenance that he wasn't happy to see me. I knew at that point that I was going to hell. Jesus started communicating to me. He started communicating to me, but he, his mouth was not moving. It's sort of like Jesus was, was communi communicating to me telepathically, to mind to mind. In that realm, the creatures they, or whatever it is, whatever spiritual being that you see, they communicate to you mind to mind, thought to thought. Jesus was communicating to me. And what I got from what Jesus was letting me know was that he was letting me know that my life on earth was over. My life on earth was over. And I was getting ready to go to hell. I was getting ready to go to hell. And that this place that I was getting ready to go into, it was my portion it was my reality. It was my, it was what I had sown or what I had accrued while down here on this earth. So as Jesus is talking to me and he's, he's telling me that the wages of sin is death. This is what I, this is what I believe he's conveying to me by what he's saying to me. Because Jesus, you just know when you're in the presence of Jesus, you know what he's saying to you. You know you know that this is God. This is the Lord God. This is God Almighty. You just know things. And, and at that point, I knew that I was going to hell. And I was shocked. I, I knew I was going to hell and that this was my portion. And I was, I was going to hell. This was my reality. I began at this point to plead to Jesus. I began to plead to Jesus about why I should not go to hell. 
and to give me another chance. Give me another chance, Lord Jesus. Please, Lord Jesus, give me another chance. That's all I could think about and all I could say as I as I as I was think as I was thinking, he knew my thoughts. And Jesus was 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 telling me that hell was my portion. During this time, simultaneously, while I'm having a conversation with Jesus to my right, the doors of hell crack open slightly. The doors of hell cracked open slightly. And a creature flew out of hell. The creature flew out of hell. And this creature was getting ready to grab me. And I had my little brother draw the picture of what it is that I saw and what it is that I experienced when I was outside of the gates of hell. And this is the picture that my little brother drew for me. If you could see here, you could see the demonic creature. You could see Jesus right here and you could see me right here. So this is the picture right here of what, of what happened during that experience. And moving along, at this point, I sort of take my gaze that was on Jesus off and I start looking at the demonic creature. I start looking at Jesus, but looking at the demonic creature that opened, that, that, that was getting ready to consume me at this point. The demonic, spirit, the demonic creature wanted to grab me and it was furiously looking at me as if it wanted to just tear into me. And all at the same time, as the, while the gates was open, I felt the terror, the sheer terror. This terror, you cannot even describe terror. If, 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 if you had a million scary movies about terror, it, will, it, it, it fails to compare to the terrors of hell, the darkness. I felt the terror once the gate opened and this creature was there getting ready to grab me. So at this time, I'm, I'm pleading with Jesus. And, and at this point, Jesus starts to tell me, this creature that you see here is just like you. And I know you're probably saying, what does it mean that the Lord told you that this creature is just like you? This Jesus was, was conveying to me that the creature, the demonic spirit that was coming to grab me, this demonic spirit was assigned to me, assigned to take me down into hell where I had belonged, and that I had this demonic spirit's lust, I had this demonic spirit's anger, and I had this demonic spirit's unforgiveness. So at that very moment, at that very moment, while I'm looking at this, this angry, vicious creature, this angry, vicious creature, this angry, demonic, vicious creature getting ready to grab me. Jesus, at this point, he's here. He disappears from out of nowhere. Jesus just disappears. And he just leaves me. He leaves me all alone to this demonic creature. And at this point, the demonic creature runs at me at the speed of light. Jesus, remember, I said, Jesus had, Jesus left me. He left me. While he conveyed to me what he wanted me to know, he left me. Jesus left me. And the demonic creature ran at me, flew at me with the speed of light. And at this point, I can only scream, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I scream so 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 loud that if that if if a person on earth had heard me scream like this they would have thought i escaped from a mental hospital i scream so loud in that in that in the spiritual realm and at this time while i was screaming my little brother woke me up and because my little brother we share a room. He has a bed here. I was on my bed. He was on his bed. 
And he woke me up and shook me and said, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? You were screaming, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. And he heard me screaming for Jesus, Lord Jesus. So this is the experience that I had. And I was so terrified. I was so petrified at the experience that I had. Some of you out there, some of you probably have had similar experiences with hell. Hell is, is a place that you do not want to go. You do not want your enemy to go. See, I wasn't even given the fullness of hell. See, if, if I had went into hell, or even if I just stepped one foot in it, I know I probably would not have gone back. I knew that this would, it would be it. And then I would have died in my sleep. And then they would have said, I died of natural causes and my soul would have been in hell forever. And I knew that outside of that gate, once you go through that gate, let me say something. There's some of you out there, you're listening. You're listening and, and the spirit of God is convicting you right now. Once you go through the gates of that place called hell, there is no returning. And while I stood outside that gate, I knew that. And this is why I pleaded for Jesus. I knew that if I had went past that gate, there, would, there was no returning. All those, these are some, some things that I learned from that ex, this experience that I had. All those who go through the gates of hell, there's no returning back. I don't care if you're rich, you're poor, you're famous, you're, or you're just an unknown person. If you go through those gates of hell that I saw with my, with my spiritual eyes in that experience, once you go through those gates, there's no coming back. There's, no, there's, no, there's, there's, there's nothing that's going to get you out of the clutches of hell. The same hell that I experienced, that I was terrified it's standing in front of this gate and seeing this demonic creature getting ready to swallow me up. And to put it this way, you're probably thinking now, what got you out stand? What got you to stand outside of the gates of hell, getting ready to go to hell? What what got me on the road to hell was unforgiveness. There are many of you out there, you're Christians. Someone has wronged you. And in your heart, you're angry. And that anger festers into bitterness. I was a very angry man, a very angry young man. Because, you know, I had issues with my grandmother at this time. And, you know, I had been arguing with her and I felt like God judged me. And... At this moment, hell was my portion. My time was up and I was getting ready to go to hell. This some of this this there are people in hell. I want you guys to listen to this. There are people in hell that they were not necessarily bad people. They paid their taxes. They, you know, they did everything that, you know, you say, that's a good person right there. Maybe they fed the poor, but they didn't fully surrender over their life and their will and their actions to Jesus Christ. And I felt like I didn't fully give everything over. I didn't give God my anger. I didn't give God my frustration. I didn't give God my pain. And as a result, I held on to bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And this is what led me outside of the gates of hell. And like I said, I, I, I was a Christian. I was I went to church faithfully. I, I studied the Bible. I, you know, I, I, I preached, you know, I did many things. But yet when I died, I found myself standing outside of the gates of hell. It's one thing. You can be in church and you can do all great works, signs, miracles, prophecies. But yet, if there's something in you, if there's something in you, let me repeat. If there's something in you that gives the devil legal rights and a legal hold over your life. 
at the time where you die, you're going to hell. What I realized from this experience is that it does not take much to go to hell. Let me repeat that. It does not take much to go to hell. What I got standing outside of that gates of hell was that hell is a place, is a place, a dreadful, sorrowful place where those that go down forever have the memory, the memories of their life down here on earth. Because at this point, when I stood outside the gates of hell, I knew, I knew things. I remembered my family. I remembered life on earth. But yet, all of that was nothingness. It was judgment time. It was personal accountability of, for sin. I knew that that I had I had died, and you know, this was it. So this this, this testimony, this true testimony, I know it's going to reach someone out there. It's going to be someone out there, someone who's probably a Christian, but you're kind of back and forth, back and forth with the Lord. Sometimes you're hot, and then sometimes you look warm, and then sometimes you're just not all for God. I want you to be on fire for God because hell is real. Hell is a real place. It's a place that after death, a sinner is confined to hell. Hell is a real place. I cannot stress that. Hell is a real place. Many of you, you've probably seen testimonies. You've probably seen people go deep in depth. I wasn't given that. I, I praise God that I wasn't given that opportunity to go on an adventure in hell like some of you guys did. But just standing outside of hell, it was enough for me. It took me weeks before I finally started to discuss this with even my little brother who was in the same room with me on a different bed before I started explaining that to him. And even after you have an experience with hell, if you really, anyone that has an experience with hell, you know that it's something sort of you want to brush off your shoulder. It's not something you really want to talk about, but this is something that really happened and it, 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 it shocked me. It, it, it made me realize that that this is a lost and a dying world and that people are plummeting into hell right now. I was fortunate that Jesus had mercy upon me and he let me return because there's some some they die in their sleep and they're not given that that um they're not given that um ability to come back and that ability to you know come back on earth and make things right. Hell is a real place. My, my message to those out there today is quit living one foot in and one foot in God and then one foot in the world. Quit being sitting down, quit sitting down in the church and also being lukewarm because that same lukewarmness is going to get you to hell. Ask, ask God for forgiveness of your sin and have a genuine faith to do right and a genuine faith to live for God. Because I was one of those. I, I, I could preach. I could preach the word. I can teach the word. I can, you know, do all these great things for God. But at the end of the day, that unforgiveness, that bitterness, it sunk my ship. And there's some of you out there, you, 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 you're probably thinking to yourself, what is this guy talking about? What is this guy talking about? How does this message apply to me it definitely applies to you because we all headed towards one or two destinations either you're going to heaven through the lord jesus christ or you're going to hell it's either the broad way or the narrow way the narrow way that leads to eternal life or the broad way that many go in that leads to destruction see I know now, after, after having this experience, how serious the red letters of Jesus Christ are in the Bible. Jesus means what he says. Jesus, let me repeat that. Jesus repeat, he means what he says. Sometimes people, and I'm, I'm, by people I'm saying Christians, Christians see Jesus' red letters as suggestion, as suggestions, not actual commands. 
Jesus has commanded us to a life of holiness. And if we're not holy, we have no business going into heaven. And I don't care what maybe your preacher told you, you don't need to repent no more because repentance is a work and we're saved by grace, not we're saved by faith through grace and we saved by faith through grace in Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, we have to repent. You have to repent and we have to come clean with Almighty God. We have to find peace with God through the salvation that Jesus Christ provides because you do not want to go to hell. And as I end my testimony, I want to tell you a couple of things that I noticed standing outside of the gates of hell. I knew standing outside of the gates of hell that beyond the gates of hell, was where most of humanity was. Let me repeat that again. Standing outside of the gates of hell, because like I said in the beginning, you know things. I knew mentally, I knew spiritually, I knew that outside, right outside those gates that I was looking at, it was where humanity was. It was where humanity was. It was where most, a majority of human beings go when they die. I knew also that, like I said, once you go through the gates of hell, it's, it's over. There's no hope. There's, 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 once you get there, this is it for you. You're done. There's no more making things right. I also, I also knew that your memory of your life here on earth continues down there. Let me repeat. The memory of what you did here on this earth continues down there. So whatever you accumulated down here, whatever that you accumulate down here is what you're going to be dealing with when you go to that place called hell. I also knew that when you in hell, when you in hell, let me repeat this. When you are in hell, you know things. You have a, a, a sense of you have a sense of knowledge that you there are people that have master's degrees, there's people that have doctorates, but when you in the spiritual realm, you just know things. You just know you have your knowledge is is to the max, it's to the fullest. You you have a keen sense of touch, taste, sight, smell, feel, everything is, is, is heightened. So uh, to those that go to hell, their, their sense, their ability to perceive. Like I said, when I stood outside the gates of hell, I felt terror. I felt terror. I felt terror like you would never believe. Terror that the greatest writer cannot put into words. The terror that I felt. Standing outside of the gates of hell. I don't think anyone that has, an that has had an experience in hell, a real experience in hell, they cannot exaggerate the terror of hell. But like I said, hell is, is real. And you know, hell is reality known too late. Those that go to hell, they have lost all hope for God. They have lost all hope for Jesus Christ. So right now, where you are, wherever you are in the world, were you listening to this testimony or maybe you you stumbled into YouTube and you found this video and you just been wondering, is there a hell? There most definitely is a hell. And I experienced it. I, I was stood outside of the gates of hell. Praise God, I didn't go in, but I experienced it. And if you can't see that what I'm saying is true, and that this is a reality, and this is where most people, when they take their last breath, they go. I don't know what will ever convince you that this place is real, and that you need to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. The Bible talks about how, behold, now is the accepted day of salvation. Not in 10 minutes, not in, in the next day, not in, in two weeks, but now. There are people that are dying right now and they're going to hell. They're going to that place that I stood right outside of 
and they're being tormented and they're being tortured by demonic creatures, dark angels, right now as we speak. And does the world care? No, the world goes on in spiritual darkness because the devil has deceived many. He's deceived many to think that they're on the road to eternal life, but yet they're on the broad way of destruction. So right now, give your life over to Jesus Christ in totality. Give him everything. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. Give Jesus your unforgiveness. Give Jesus your lust. Give Jesus your pornography. Give Jesus your alcoholism, your drug addiction. Give Jesus everything, everything. Just throw it at him. And, and I'm, I believe that he will deliver you because he's a delivering God. He's able to deliver you from whatever it is that you're going through. Maybe you're involved in witchcraft. Maybe you're involved in voodoo. Whatever it is that you're involved in, Jesus, Jesus Christ paid the penalty of sin on the cross. It is finished. All you need to do is receive it and he's able to deliver you. And this is my hell testimony. This is my hell testimony that definitely shook me to the core. And it caused me to re-examine my walk with God. And I pray that someone will hear this message and make the changes and study yourself to show yourself approved before God. Make sure that you're going to heaven when you die. Let me repeat. Make sure that your life insurance says Jesus Christ because you do not want to go to hell. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for taking time to listen to my hell testimony. May God bless you. May he abundantly give you his grace, his mercy, and his peace. Thank you, guys.